until the liftoff. This is from the command. And the astronauts are well aboard the spacecraft, making their final checks and probably calm down their mood. 40 seconds to go. The final countdown to the liftoff of China's fifth manned mission, Shenzhou 10. 30 seconds to go. The four boosters strapped on the rocket, now standing by to be ignited. 20 seconds to go. Ten, nine, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And we have a liftoff. The liftoff of Shinjo 10 and the astronauts on board. Pretty happy and confident and waving their hands to the command center here on the Earth. And now Shinjo 10 is on his journey to space to join China's prototype space lab Tiangong 1, which was launched in 2011. But this is about 10 minute process for the rocket and the spacecraft to go through until they reach the orbit. This is what we're going to see in the next 10 minutes. The optical laser has been tracking the spacecraft and the launch vehicle, all things are normal. Oh, well, this is a view taken from the launch vehicle of the boosters and is ascending to the space. The radar tracking is still working well. Uh, this is a view of the Earth from the launch vehicle, the rocket. Uh, the four boosters are still giving a huge thrust to the combination of the launch vehicle and the spacecraft itself. Aboard on them are three Chinese astronauts setting off for the fifth manned space program in China. Booster engine cut off. Yeah, the booster engine cut off, so the four boosters were let go. Well, now the escape tower were let go. That means uh, it's on its own for the combination of the spacecraft and the launch vehicle. But in case anything happened, uh, the astronaut can still use the spacecraft uh, to evacuate. That is getting higher. And now the separation of the boosters, the four boosters were let go. And the next uh, will be the second stage being separated. Now the second stage also come off. The second stage of the booster also come off. And next will be the separation of the pairing of the rocket. And now still an optical image of uh, the launch vehicle in the spacecraft with the four boosters already separated and descending. Uh, actually, it's an infrared picture of the spacecraft. Now the pairing of the rocket also come off. We still have uh, optical 
radar tracking the spacecraft. It goes, everything is goes going on as scheduled. So when can we say it's already in space? Is it 200 kilometers above the Earth? Usually the dividing line is 100 kilometers. 100, so it is a further than 100 kilometers. Day. Yes, at, at 100 kilometers it is actually possible for a satellite to execute one orbit around the Earth before air drag. But will, will the astronauts okay. feel the uh, microgravity at that moment? No, they're, 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 they're under the thrust of the rocket. No, so they're, they're under the thrust of the rocket right. until the rocket uh, until separated. The ro they until still the rocket's turned off, right. Okay. Then they will feel microgravity. And that's a moment of magic because uh, <laughs> for many people, they may never have the chance uh, to have a feel of what microgravity <laughs> does yes. to you. And just at that single moment when the booster come off, you are in a microgravity environment. But of course, those astronauts still strapped on their seats. If, if they let loose of this uh, seat belts. They have to take their seat belts off to appreciate it, right. Now we are hearing all the tracking stations uh, providing the update about the status of the combination. So far, all the radar signals from the tracking stations have proved that the combination has been moving on smoothly. And uh, on the right hand side is a view of the Earth and the spacecraft in one frame. Mm -hmm. We see just a very tiny part of the Earth on the upper hand side. That's uh, taken from a camera, I believe, outside the yes. uh, spacecraft. And on the right-hand side now is the infrared picture of the spacecraft. And now it's turned to a picture of the simulated uh, map of the trajectory of the combination. We cannot tell whether the astronauts are, are feeling uh, good or not, but it seems uh, they are in control of the spacecraft and waiting until the moment that they feel microgravity when the booster come off. And this time it seems we have more cameras uh, mounted on the spacecraft and the rocket, so we see some pictures we never seen before during the liftoff. Well, very soon, the second stage will also be let off. That means we are about to enter the orbit. Now the second stage also turn off. The second stage of the booster was turned off, the engine was turned off. Very soon the spacecraft will be transported into its uh, initial orbit. John, uh, what, what are those uh, things that we must consider to calculate a, a, a appropriate orbit for a spacecraft? Well, the, the, there are actually six things you measure. Your position in north-south, east-west, and vertically, and your velocity in each of those three directions. Mm -hmm. Then 
given all six of those coordinates, you calculate what the future path will be. Mm. If that future path stays outside the atmosphere, then you're in a stable orbit. Okay. Well, it's just less than one minute until the separation of the launch vehicle and the spacecraft itself. And that happens, it means the spacecraft is on its own to the orbit. Now the separation of the booster and the spacecraft. So the spacecraft Shenzhou-10 is on its own to get to the orbit. And that is a major point saying that we have completed the liftoff process. Uh, we have the, uh, the, ascens the ascension of the spacecraft. So now, do we still have power on the spacecraft to adjust its uh, position? There is uh, sufficient power to add a small amount of additional velocity if needed, but mostly the fuel that's aboard the spacecraft now is used for aiming it, mm. for it adjusting its, its, its attitude. Its attitude. Right. But it, it is already in, in orbit. It doesn't need yes. to go even higher. Yes. As far as we know, they're, they're safely in orbit right now, yes. And they, if they need to change their orbit a little bit, they will, they will start their engine. Yes, and they, they will have to burn the engines to adjust the orbit because uh, they're in an orbit which is in the same plane in the same as the plane. orbit of Tiangong, but, but they're in a slightly lower orbit. Yeah. So they're going to be traveling around the Earth faster, mm -hmm. and they'll be catching up with Tiangong. So, so they, they will speed up a little bit? They, they will have to add a little additional velocity to raise their orbit up to the same altitude as Tiangong, and then as they approach it, they'll have to sp burn some fuel to adjust their speed and their direction so that they approach it in from exactly the right angle mm. and at and a safe speed. And also this time they will try to fly over Tiangong, fly by Tiangong, mm. and fly under Tiangong. Uh, that means it's just like they are just uh, moving in, in a kind of a formation. Right, right. Although they're traveling very fast, Although they're, they're traveling very, very fast. Five kilometers per second. Yeah, five kilometers their per second. Their relative velocity is very small. Mm. That's why they can rendezvous and docking. Now we have seen the solar panel unfolded. That means um, the spacecraft can use the, the solar energy to power itself. It has now power. Uh, does it need to adjust uh, the? Uh, position of the towards the sun? Yes. Uh, and can we tell it is in the sun or in the shadow or not from this picture? It's pretty bright. I think it has to be in the sun. Yeah, still. it's pretty bright, especially at the far end. So it mm. seems that it is in the sun.